Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This is Joyce and this is Joyce K Nurse Canada channel. Guys, this is another beautiful day. I'm back here just to give you updates on uh, Canada immigration. In case you're new here, you're welcome. In case you have not subscribed on this channel, please subscribe because there's so much coming. There's a lot of things I have aligned for you guys. And uh, this, uh, this North Bay is one of them. Uh, lately, we have been looking at how you can immigrate to the rural communities in Canada. If you are that kind of a person who likes living in the village, this video is for you because I want to take you right deep into the village of Canada and let's explore how you can actually settle in the rural community. I live in one of the rural communities and I'm so excited to be here and I want you guys to grab this opportunity and join the rural communities in Canada. So today we are here with uh, North Bay. Uh, I would like to, to hear from you so far which of the three communities you like because we have talked about Sudbury. We have talked about no, uh, Thunder Bay and we have also talked about Timmins. Three communities so far. Remember, we have a total of 11 communities. You must find one of the communities among the 11. At least there is no way you're going to miss one of them. One of them that is so easy for you. And today we have North, North Bay. North Bay is, is also in Ontario. Remember, I said that Ontario has got five of them, five of the rural communities which are participating in this um, rural and northern immigration pilot. So today, let us look at North Bay. I like North Bay a lot. I didn't know, by the way, so I'm also learning with you guys. I didn't know North Bay has got such a good program, as in they are so organized compared to Sudbury. My friends, North Bay is so organized. So let's go to the home of North Bay and see what they are saying here. Uh, they are welcoming you if you're interested in the rural and northern immigration pilot and the North Bay, Ontario area. This is for you. In partnership with IRCC, the North Bay area has entered into an agreement to benefit our region with this pilot project. So they're saying here that each of the 11 communities across uh, that uh, across Canada are participating in the pilot and they have tailored their immigration program to meet the economic goals and to develop our local economy by supporting the development of our workforce in high demand jobs. Okay. So if you're interested in participating in this program, please click one of the buttons. So I like North Bay because uh, North Bay, they have got you. You can see here, they have information for applicants. If you are an applicant, this is for you. For employers, this is where the employers will be coming to register because they have to register to be allowed to post their jobs. This is why I like you guys applying jobs in the communities because you can see the employers have their portal here so that any employer who comes to post jobs in the rural community, they are verified by the communities. There is no scammer that can post their jobs in the community. So any jobs that you find within the communities, they are genuine jobs because they have been verified here. So and then offer of em employment submission. This is the last step where you submit your application. And then here is build your candidate profile. So let us click here because most of us are applicants. And then they are saying here that they would, they would like to highly recommend that you read the full guideline for rural and northern immigration pilot by IRCC. So before you complete your application, you need to read and understand what IRCC is saying about rural community immigration pilot. But I know you have gone through that because I have taken you through in other videos and we are going to go straight to start the application. You see here, they start the application, ensure eligibility, find employment in the community, receive an offer of employment, then apply for community recommendation. After that, you submit your PR and then government approval and then finally work permit and permanent resident. I can't wait for you guys to get to this step of getting the permanent resident. And then finally here, there's arrival in the community. I have been to North Bay and it's, um, it's, it's, a, good, it's, a, good, uh, it's a good community. It's actually surrounded by the lake. It's, 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 it looks like it's in an island. So it's so beautiful. Surrounded by the lake, humid, beautiful. 
So it's and it's nearer Toronto than Sudbury is. So it's a, it's a good place for you to settle down. So uh, we are going to start with the first one. Ensure that you meet the, the federal eligibility requirements. By now, you know which are the federal eligibility requirements. And in case you do not know, I'm going to tag all those videos that I've done previously on this video on the description. I have actually compiled all the important videos that, that are aligning with this with these um, communities. And then you need to click, sorry, so that at least you understand what we are talking about. The next thing is that to ensure that you meet the community-based criteria. The community-based criteria and the federal eligibility requirements are almost the same. Because the federal eligibility requirements, federal is the government. Federal is the entire government of Canada. And the federal government is the one that hosts the IRCC. So finally, whichever program you use to apply to come to Canada, whether as a visitor, whether as a as a community PNP, whether as community nominations, whether PNP, whether express entry, whichever method you apply to come to Canada, you will finally end up into federal, federal, uh, federal application, which is the express entry. And is the one here. So you need to click here and see whether you meet the requirements. Remember, we have talked about federal eligibility requirements. Three classes. First of all, there's one for skilled immigrants that one is for people with education the second one is for technical skills somebody with at least from four education but they don't have they don't have other education but they have got skills like truck drivers and the third one is canada experience that is where i say you can come here as a visitor and convert it to work work permit or a student and convert it to work permit so those are the three key areas of federal eligibility requirements. And then it's based on points. Points, you know them, the six points, you know them by now based on merit. And then secondly, is that you ensure that you meet the community-based criteria. Community-based criteria is different for each community, but the main one is that you must prove to them that you're going to live in that particular community for at least two years before you move to a different community. So in case you're coming to North Bay, you cannot leave North Bay to come and stay in Sudbury. You have to stick there for two years at least because that community is the one that has given you, um, you know, like authority and, and also paperwork to stay there. Okay, then find full-time employment in the community. You have to find a full-time uh, job in the community and then after that complete the schedule, uh, rule law and northern immigration pilot and then you submit your rule law, North Bay, area application and then supplementary information. I want us to see uh, rule of community requirements for North Bay. And then uh, where are the requirements? The community criteria are designed, let me see. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, they're right here. They're right here. Candidate eligibility, candidate one and two, recommendation, and all that. Okay, so let's click and see the criteria for the community. There are three of them. You need to meet all the federal eligibility. You need to receive a job offer in one of the NOCs that they want, and then you need to have a past work experience that is uh, commensurate with duties and responsibilities required to effectively work in the job specified within the job offer to ensure that they have required skill set for the employment being offered. Just three requirements, just that, okay? And then you have to, to, to pass English or French, then knowledge of official languages, either English or French, uh, then the candidate's age on the day of application is received to assess whether, okay, of course, the age, then possession of valid driver's license from within Canada or their current, current country of residence to establish an intention to reside in the community. So they need a driving license. Okay. Then candidates past residence in the in and level of familiarity with rural and remote communities to demonstrate a candidate's connection to the they need somebody who is coming from the rural 
So when you are applying to North Bay, remember this. They don't want you to come and say, I have always lived in Nairobi town. If you say that, they're not going to nominate you. They want somebody who has lived in the village, and I believe all of us have come from a village somewhere. That is what they want to hear, that you have lived in a village and that you can survive in a village. It's not that the village is so harsh here, but they just want somebody who can survive in the village. So the other one is that um, the candidate's familial and friendship ties to an established member of the community to demonstrate a candidate's connection to the community. The family member must be a permanent resident of Canada or a Canadian citizen age 18 or older and has been living within the boundaries of North Bay as defined for a minimum of two years. And then the candidate undertaking an, ex an exploratory visit of North Bay for at least five nights of stay to demonstrate a candidate's connection. I don't think these ones are mandatory, guys, but if you have lived in North Bay, you have spent five nights in North Bay, that one increases your chances of getting nominated. That's why I always say, when you come to visit Canada, make sure that you also visit the rulers. Don't just come stay in Toronto. Make sure that you spend at least five nights in North Bay. That way, you increase your chances of getting nominated. And then the candidate's work experience, uh, you know, related to the job being offered. And then the candidate's current work for an employer who has provided the employment offer for the purpose of this program to demonstrate a candidate's connection to the community and intention to reside in the community. This is the one I was telling you, you need to promise them that you intend to live there. The candidate's current employment in North Bay to demonstrate a candidate's connection to the community. You need a job offer. Okay? So candidate's education at public post-secondary institution within the boundaries of North Bay as defined by Ministro. This one is just to increase your chances, but remember they're also welcoming people who are in the overseas, people who are outside Canada. But if you have studied in Canada, you also get more chances of getting nominated. This is why I always insist, in such a community, look for a college. If For the international students who are coming here, look for a college in North Bay and apply because they're saying here, when you have studied in North Bay, they are going to nominate you. Don't just go to Toronto. Toronto, everybody is going there. Try to go to the rural communities, guys, because you can see if you have studied in the rural community, of course, you have more chances of getting nominated. Okay? Yeah, so all those are the, the, the points that they need for you to, to meet before you apply. They're not mandatory, but at least you need to meet most of them. Okay, so the other thing is that I wanted us to look at the jobs. We have met. We have now. We have now met the community eligibility, the federal eligibility, the federal requirements, and now we are looking at employment. Uh, employment. You can check the frequently asked questions on your own. Then build your candidate profile, and then rural and northern immigration pilot offer of employment. These are the jobs. I wanted to show you how to search for these jobs. Huh? You see, they are in different classifications. Like this one is healthcare and social worker here. Trades, you, you click trades and it's going to show you heavy duty machines, welders, carpenters, electrician, plumbers, truck drivers, heavy equipment operators, automotive mechanical installers, they're all here. The other one is uh, business administration is here. They want accountants, administrative auditors. Uh -huh. IT is here. They want computer and information, computer engineers, information system, database analysts, and software engineering, engineers and designers. Then other professionals is architects, architecture, civil, engineers, aircraft, mechanics. Eh, they also want aircraft. Yeah, they have a small airspace. And then aircraft instrument, air pilots. Wow, legal administrative. And then open NOC and all that. Guys, this is how you look for jobs in this North Bay. This is how you look for jobs. So I'm going to share this link with you. Uh, let me just copy and paste it on the description. Just click and go through and then start applying for jobs in the North Bay because you need a job offer before they nominate you in the North Bay community. Then complete the schedule, rural and northern immigration pilot. This is where you come in, complete now the, the application. And then submit your your application, and then supplementary information in case you need to, to read more about the, the, the North Bay 
community. Remember, you cannot submit fraudulent documents, fake documents. You cannot do that. You cannot accept money for a job offer. You can't. It's illegal. You see here, you cannot accept money for a job offer. Those people that have been giving you money, those people that have been asking you to pay money to get a job offer is not even allowed. It's illegal. It should be free. So they are scammers. Just know that they are scammers. And then intentionally misleading the community is wrong. It's very wrong. You should not mislead the community. That's why I'm here too to read for you directly what is written here. And then you can, I'm also sharing the links with you so that you can read on your own, guys. Otherwise, I appreciate you so much, guys. I hope you're following us in these uh, steps, in these communities. So we have done, so far we have done four. This was the fourth one. How many are we remaining? Yeah. We are remaining how many? We are remaining seven now. Because they're 11 and we have done four. We are remaining seven. Seven, we are going to do them from Sunday to Sunday and then we are done. By the time we finish these 11 communities, please, you need to have identified which community you need to settle. And because all communities are different. What North Bay, you, you see like what North Bay requires today is not what t means required yesterday. And it's not what Sudbury required. required. So all communities are different. Some are easier to settle, others are not very easy. But we have to go through all of them. Once I do it with you, please always study the link. Take the link, study more, research, consult. In case you need to consult a lawyer, remember we have got Helen. You can also you can always consult Helen for further clarifications because remember she's a lawyer. Okay? This information I'm giving is not in any way legal advice. You need Helen to do further consultations. And I'm going to share her her website here in case you need her to do these applications for you after you get a job offer because she doesn't get you a job offer but you can after you get a job offer you can consult her and she can process for you the rest of the process thank you guys remember to subscribe and share and may god bless you bye bye